Well, it's been a while. Let's do another video. I actually been meaning to do a video for quite some time, but I've been rather busy. Uh, so first thing, uh, you might notice something new here. Uh, I've had this for a few months now. This is a 29-inch TriSync Arcade monitor. Uh, of course, it has many, many features, but I mainly use it as my X68000 monitor, as it's fully compatible with everything the computer will output. And overall, beautiful picture, beautiful size. Very, very happy with it. So anyway, uh, today, I thought I'd take a quick look at mice for the X60000. Uh, originally, I wanted to do a whole kind of special on some of the weirder controllers and peripherals for the system, but there's actually just so many that, um, like, it's almost kind of pointless. Like, or... I mean, like, you couldn't do it in one video. So, we're just going to start with the mice, and sooner or later I'll do others. But, um, the mice are kind of interesting, just because, you know, right from the start, the X68000 computer does use real analog mice built right into the absolute basic BIOS of the system. And, like, a few other weird exotic computers... It actually can't even use two of them at once. So, for example, like Lemmings here, uh, this version does actually have the weird split-screen two-player version with, with dual-mouse support from the uh, Amiha original. So, yeah, this is one of the few versions that have that feature. And well, I don't see myself playing it for more than playing that mode more than a gimmick. It does have it on this version. So anyway, the kind of the uh, quintessential mouse of the X68000 would be this thing here. Typically known as the trackball mouse. They made them in several colors to match the machine. Um, like the computers itself, it's a fairly innovative kind of thing because, you know, it looks kind of ugly, I'll admit, and you've got your big mouse here and your two buttons. And um, But what you can also do is you can actually... Pull the cover off to expose the ball, and then if you flip it over, there's a little switch here. Flick it to trackball mode, and it locks the ball in the upright position, and now it's trackball. Uh, at first, this seems a little strange because the buttons are here, but number one, you can actually turn this sideways. So now this is up and this is down, and there's actually buttons here and here, and these are the exact same as the left and right mouse buttons that you push here. So, if you're using this as a game controller, it actually works pretty well, because you can hold it steady in your left hand, while you can use your right thumb to move the ball around, and then you can still hit the buttons freely. Which you kind of need to do, because since this is also a mouse, you know, there's no friction here. You can't just put this on a table and slide all over the place, as it should, being a mouse. But, as a handheld game controller, this actually does work pretty well. You can flip around, left and right, and, yeah, I was quite happy with this mouse for quite some time. Um, its main drawback, though, is, as you can probably guess, it's not a very comfortable thing. Especially if you actually wanted a mouse. It's an actual mouse mode, it's ah, just a really awkward shape. And the buttons are honestly pretty crap. I actually prefer these buttons. So, for this, in response to this, Sharp actually made a more standard mouse later on. Which I think this was mostly marketed with the compact models, but um, any mouse will work with any system. As you can see, this is a much more comfortable mouse. The buttons are significantly better. But it is just a mouse, pure and simple. Um, these are actually a bit harder to find than the trackball mouse, but due to lack of demand, these are kind of the cheapest of the sharp mice you can find. There are some third-party models as well, but we're not going to go into those. Uh, however, the problem with this, and the reason I highly don't recommend it, and the reason it is cheaper, is it just doesn't have the compatibility. For example, uh, Dempa, aka Microsoft, made did a port of Camel Try to the system. 
and besides being an excellent port to make it as playable and as close to the arcade as possible, as you can see it includes the XPDL1, which to put it bluntly, is this contraption. Um, as you can see, it's basically just some metal slapped together with some gears, so that when you turn this left, it turns the disc actually to the right, and when you turn to the right, it turns the disc to the left. So, what you can do with this, is it basically just slaps inside here. You actually need the bolts down here so that you can make it nice and tight. And then you can spin this around and basically it becomes a makeshift paddle. Which for a game like Camel Try, where you you know want to rotate in a circle, it actually works quite well once you get used to it. Um, of course it depends on the you know the shape, the condition of your mouse. If you've got a ball that's really marked up. Truth be told, when I first got this myself, it was actually broken. Um, like the, the gear. Originally there was kind of a sticky rubber grommet shock absorber kind of thing and it just sat on the gear and just the friction itself pushed it but mine was so worn out that it would not turn the disc anymore so I ended up super gluing the disc straight to the plate and now it does work solidly and I definitely do enjoy using this with Camel Try. You can kind of also use it with games like Arkanoid and Metal Orange but it's not those games don't have Camel Try actually has a um, a setting for a sensitivity setting and I find if I use this and put it on the highest it plays really nicely but the other paddle games don't have that so it's just not quite as responsive enough to play those but for Camel Drive this works great but as you can see this only due to the shape this only fits the trackball mouse so if you have the often cheaper mouse like this just it, it's it's not gonna work if the ball's not in the right position, it's it's useless. So for that reason, the trackball mouse is generally the one that most people want. Not only is it interesting, but it's just more compatible. However, Sharp actually did make another option, which is the main subject of today's video, and that is the trackball. Yeah, this is actually a rather, honestly, fairly rare accessory for the system. I've been trying to get one of these for a long time, Truth be told, they show up on places like Yahoo Japan maybe once, maybe twice a year. But yeah, it's a fairly standard design as you can see. Advantage though is you get this big giant trackball. Very smooth, very nice to use, very easy to control. And this is what we're going to be showing off today. Uh, my main complaint with this thing is number one, this doesn't actually come out. If you actually want to take the ball and clean it, you have to literally unbolt the thing. Thankfully, I got mine boxed and fairly clean, so I don't have that issue. So it's fairly common to get my mice that's all gunked up and need to be cleaning. My main real concern with this, though, are the buttons. These buttons are ass. Um, they're kind of similar to the X68000 keyboard buttons. In fact, they're kind of spring-loaded, and sometimes, like, they'll get actually slightly, not stuck, but they'll feel stuck. And sometimes you'll push it and it won't actually activate when you think it did. Though, most of the games that I use with this use very limited need for the buttons, so it's not like you're constantly pushing them. So overall, I'm very happy to get one of these. This is a, a kind of a dream controller, especially for my setup here. But enough talking. Let's uh, get the system up and running and show you how this thing actually works. Okay, so the first game we'll be doing is everybody's old favorite, Marble Madness. Uh, the X68000 port of this game is quite fantastic. Um, especially if you have what you need to play it properly. This game is actually 24 kilohertz native. So like if you put it in 31, you, it basically doesn't redraw it, it just puts in a tiny border. Which is kind of lame. Though more compatible if you're using an upscaler element. Though, if you have one of these type of monitors, the 24 kilohertz is what you want to use. Interestingly enough, this game does in fact, since this came out in like a later release, like 91 I think, it does actually have separate control settings for the mouse trackball, meaning the trackball mouse, the mouse, or the standard trackball which I'm using here. And you can assign them differently for player two. And yes, you do have the two players at once in this mode. 
So I'm going to be playing it very easy because I suck at this game. But this is just to show it. So as you can imagine, um, a giant, a full, well, it's not quite as big as an arcade trackball, but a fairly large trackball like this for a game that was meant to use a trackball originally is about the best combination you can hope for. So it's going to be hard to play with just kind of one hand here. Normally I'd set this flat and play with two, but... Give me a little more leverage. Yeah, if you're a Marvel Madness fan, I can't really imagine a better way to play it other than having the actual arcade. So I remember as a kid I had a friend with the NES game, and while I like the idea of it, just never really get used to the controls, but here... Yeah, go, 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 go! Put it flat on the surface, you need to kind of switch hands like I'm doing here. But. Yeah, it's not very good at this game a little bit. But yeah, I used to play this with the smaller trackball mouse, and it was still fully quite playable, but this is definitely my preferred way to do it. And yeah. Shame this this trackball device is so hard to get because it is quite a nice little controller if you want to do. Go go go! Ah, damn it! Lucky. Can we do it? Why not? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. Not bad. And here's where I'm going to get game over, because I just... <laughs> I hate these stupid vacuums that suck at those Come on. screw up. No! Oh! Oh, oh man. Lucky, lucky, lucky. No! Oh, and I totally blew it. Ah. So, yeah. Um, if Marvel Madness is your game, you can get, get one of these, you'll be quite happy. Alright, let's quick pause and go to our next one. Okay, next up is everyone's favorite title game they've ever played. Cybalion. Um, the arcade was, as far as I know, not even officially sold outside of Japan. Ham, other than some prototypes, but this is in fact an, arc an actual game that another arcade trackball arcade game. So, what a better controller than an actual trackball? Um, if you're not familiar with this game, it's weird. Uh, it has lots of. It's not truly random, but it has lots of logarithms leading you to a hundred different endings. There's like ten bosses, and it's random which ones you fight. And if you do good enough, you'll go on. This is 
game that was designed for a trackball, and it definitely shows. And the, the buttons on this trackball kind of suck, but since I only have to hold it down, it's really not an issue at all. Which is nice, because this is a game that... Oh, I'm just, this is a boss I'm not good at. <laughs> Died on the first boss. Yeah, if you're not familiar with this one, your fire rate recharges based on your the speed you move. So it's kind of a you're kind of constantly flying around. Um, yeah, this game doesn't even support digital controls on the X68000. Your choices are using the mic, the mouse port, or you can also use the cyber stick, which works okay, but it doesn't have the same feeling. Ooh, lucky. My lucky Silverhawk here. This doesn't have the same feeling as the an actual trackball does. Like this is a game that I've tried to play in the past and just couldn't really get into it. But once I get this baby, I give another try and it's, it controls better. It's just frantic and you just kind of move through it and. Hope you don't die, it's little by little you get better at it. And since the levels are pretty much random in their layout, it all comes down to raw skill for the most part. You gotta dig those Zuncata tunes, which are pulled out of the Super Nintendo port completely. So either way, if game interests you, I'd recommend doing research on it, because it's not... It's fairly unconventional, quite experimental design, and... But once you kind of get into its pacing, it's... This boss is actually much easier, because I actually know his pattern. But this whole game is about 15 minutes long, so dying quickly is to be expected. But yeah, getting this controller made this game a whole lot more fun. And um, it's one of those games kind of almost like the original Gauntlet arcade game where you just kind of don't even really care how far you get so much as you just kind of charge through it and... Why can't I make it through here? <laughs> and just kind of, you know, hope for the breast and... But... It's definitely unique and, yeah, I enjoy this one. Um, I'll give you a warning though, besides the, uh, the fact that it has no digital controller support at all. This game only outputs in 15 kilohertz, and bizarrely, it actually uses um, 480i, as in the dreaded interlaced mode, for the menus and in, in between stages, which you rarely see on this system, because, I mean, why would you? It outputs in 24 and 31. Well, once you're actually playing the game, it is, in fact, proper 240p, meaning this game plays absolute hell with video converters and upscalers, so if you don't have something that can truly handle it, like this arcade monitor I'm using, um, it might be more annoying than it's worth. <laughs> but yeah. No better way to play a trackball game than with an actual trackball. It's actually fairly tiring to play because you're 
laying around so much, but it's kind of part of the fun. <laughs> uh, I think you've seen me suck enough at this one. Now, as you can imagine, uh, the trackball works great with other games. This just requires lots of frantic mouse ball movements. Uh, Metal Orange EX, probably one of the fan favorites on the system. Or Arkanoid 2 Revenge of Dope. Both work fantastically with it because you just get great control since you can move your two fingers and you're just moving left to right. But since this video is already going to be longer than I planned it to be, we will finish with one final classic, everybody's favorite arcade trackball game, uh, Kyoku Tiger by Toa Plan. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of kidding. Obviously, um, Q Kyoku Tiger here is not using trackball in the arcade. It is a standard 2D shooter. However, I'm not kidding when I say we're actually going to be playing this. Um, this port tends to get a bad rap. Uh, lots of you know, collectors type say, oh, I mean, it's, it kind of was a miracle it even came out. Kanako was going to release also Tatsujin and Same Same Same, but they just never came to fruitation, I think, because of Ving and the FM Towns ports. Um, anyway, this is a solid port, so, but, even if you're not interested in, you know, playing this version, it does have a few extra features you won't find anywhere else that kind of go just put in there just for the hell of it I guess the main one being analog control via the mouse uh, it's activated by pushing F1 when you boot the computer and if you hold F2 you get auto fire so let's just do this so you might be thinking this is kind of stupid I'm gonna play a 2D shooter a highly precise 2D shooter with a trackball, but um, as I said, the game was actually programmed to do this, and it's kind of unique. Um, so let me just get this in the credit. Um, uh, that's right. I have to use the keyboard to get the options set up, and let's get it started. Because when I first found out about this feature, I assumed it was just going to be the same with the stick. But, actually, Kanako reprogrammed it to use full-on analog control. Meaning you get real-time speed control. And it works pretty well, because I can just hold this button down and still hit the bomb button. So, as you can see, I can move literally as fast or as slow as I want. Something you can't do in any other version of this game. In fact, you can even move faster than the game can actually render. Meaning, in theory, if you're a true expert and you have this memorized, you could probably get more points this way because you could kill absolutely everything because you can just click around. Note, if you do that through a bullet, you will die. The game knows where you are, it just can't render it fast enough. But, um... As a bizarre idea as this is, it actually works really well. And I found this extremely relaxing to play use my two fingers, give it a little touch, and once you get kind of used to it, I used to play this with the trackball mouse, and it worked okay, but you just don't get the leverage you do with the larger ball. It's the full-size trackball here, and it's just... Yeah, this is weird, and probably shouldn't exist, but it does, and I quite enjoy it. In fact, I'd definitely recommend giving this a try. As far as I know, if you use an emulator, you can just use whatever mouse you have on your computer. But having this little touchable, sensitive ball in my hand is, um... I don't know, this just feels amazing. So 
Well, some people might say, oh, the FM Towns board of this game is so much better music. It does have an amazing remix soundtrack element, but you can't do this. But yeah, I've never, you know, Matsu shooters have speed control, and some like, you know, Ray Zamber and Steam Hearts have turbo buttons, but actual full-on analog control in the tip of your fingers is just not something you really ever envision, but it's, this works extremely well, better than it should probably. In fact, I think it actually makes the game slightly easier as... If I'm paying attention, I can usually beat the first loop far easier with this than I can using the actual controller, just because I don't have to be so precise because I can just flick the ball and get out of most stuff in my way. So yeah, I highly recommend trying this just for the novelty sake if nothing else. But I think that's going to be enough for this video. So, yeah, I love this little thing. Um, as mentioned, they're a pain in the ass to find. But if you've got yourself a real X68000 and you want to increase your enjoyment on a few select games, um, I'd say it's worth tracking down if you can find one. But, yeah, I did, as I said, it took me quite some time to do it. But if you can, go for it the code number on here, actually mine actually came boxed and barely used, is the CZ8NT1. But yeah, happy hunting. Hopefully I'll do another video before six months. <laughs>